granular forms, and then the gray uh, membranous material in between the dot-like granular forms is the matrix. The matrix is a gel-like, blue-like substance, which is uh, the remnants of once living, now dead members of the community. They contribute their proteins, their DNA, and all of their guts to form this protective um, uh, slime-like material which surrounds the entire community and prevents it from death. This is a biofilm of Borrelia in the skin. It's from the Acrodermatitis chronica atrophicans lesion. That, you will recall, is the tertiary form of Borrelia in the human skin, well accepted in Europe. We don't think we have Acrodermatitis in the United States. It's probably due to the type of strain of Borrelia that they have which is different from the U.S. strain. In any event, uh, we have uh, dot-like uh, uh, areas within the biofilm, uh, which are the granular forms. We don't have any spiral forms at all here. And then we have pink stuff to red stuff, which is the matrix, which holds and protects uh, and surrounds the members of the biofilm and prevents them from being killed off. So, tertiary, skin, Borrelia, acrodermatitis, Biofilm, biofilm community, multiple non-spiral Borrelia, most all of them granular, surrounded by a matrix which contains DNA, and the little dot-like areas also contain DNA of the Borrelia, all Borrelia, all the time. In the tick gut, we can see examples of cystic forms and other modified forms, uh, which can perform. Uh, can uh, form uh, biofilm communities in the gut of the tick, uh, the exoded tick, which transmits the disease. These uh, gray structures are the cystic forms to highlight them. They've colored some of them blue, so that you can see that the cysts vary in size from small to medium to large. These are much, much bigger than the granular forms that I described before. This is actually uh, a black uh, cross-section cylinder of uh, one of the uh, Borrelia uh, uh, spirochetes, which is outside of the tick gut. So uh, these are cystic forms inside the gut, and more cystic forms, many, many of them, inside the gut. The gut is a hostile environment. The gut has enzymes. The enzymes are there to digest protein to make food for the, per for the uh, organism, the, uh, the tick in this case, to sustain it, to nourish it. And uh, the biofilms are there to protect the uh, spirochetes from becoming food for the nutrition of the tick. Now, my hypothesis uh, is that the biofilms that we've shown for Borrelia uh, are the structural explanation for plaques of Alzheimer's disease. That is to say, Alzheimer plaques are biofilm communities of Borrelia. Uh, this statement, then, I'm going to uh, offer some structural evidence for to back up and support. And uh, you will see some images which uh, tell you why I believe that statement to be true. The plaques, Alzheimer's, biofilm communities of Borrelia. This is from the uh, Wellcome Image Collection and has been used in a publication from the Scripps La Jolla Institute in connection with their work on Alzheimer's disease. You can see that the plaque, all by itself, is surrounded by brain tissue. So the plaque is in light um, aqua. Uh, there is a rounded structure here that's a cystic structure, to my, to my view. There are linear structures. Uh, there are uh, straight lines. Uh, those uh, could be uh, spirochetal profiles or other profiles, amyloid fibers. Uh, I'm not sure but we expect to find amyloid within uh, Alzheimer plaques. But uh, there are some uh, areas here that are uh, round, uh, black uh, areas that remind me of the canals of the biofilm. And for that reason, I think that this entire plaque traversed by uh, canals which enable fluid to get in and out is a Borrelia biofilm. 
and to uh, further add some uh, structure to that I've enlarged the uh, image here so that uh, the, only the bottom part is enlarged and you can see that these are indeed black empty spaces within the uh, Alzheimer plaque. They come in small, medium, and large and uh, further enlargement you can see that they are somewhat heterogeneous but uh, clearly very close in uh, uh, the uh, architecture to the water canal spaces of Borrelia biofilms uh, which exist in test tube preparations. Here's a biofilm with a water space. Here's another biofilm with a smaller water space. Early biofilm with large water spaces. This is a mixed biofilm. Each of the black areas is a water space or water channel. It's a solid area of a community of organisms which needs to protect itself from hostile assaults. It has nutrients coming in and waste material going out through these black spaces. This is the Alzheimer plaque once again with the DNA stain. Only DNA from Borrelia stains. The brain doesn't stain here. It's black. The plaque stains bright. Uh, there are varying degrees of green. And then there are uh, this uh, system of uh, black areas which look like at higher power interconnecting channels which uh, are like the water channels that you see in uh, laboratory prepared uh, pure cultures of Borrelia intestine. Here another Alzheimer plaque with similar areas of black uh, staining consistent with water channels uh, going uh, through the plaque. All the uh, uh, roundness of the plaque is there. It's a classical Alzheimer plaque and the green is uh, DNA from the Borrelia, only DNA of Borrelia stains green here. This is brain tissue which does not have Borrelia DNA. It does not stain green. So these two plaques both have water canals. Uh, this plaque has what I think are water canals. This is an Alzheimer plaque with a conventional stain. This is an Alzheimer plaque with a Borrelia DNA stain. This is a water channel. This is a water channel. These are water channels. Water channels plus DNA, sharply circumscribed. All of these come together under a nice definition of a biofilm community. Community of organisms surrounded by DNA and other proteins that were once living, now dead, that form a matrix to hold community together and prevent it from assault from antibodies and antibiotics. The biofilm community with water channels, water channels, water channels, water channels, water channels. All of these are communities. Now, uh, another way to look at water uh, channels is to uh, look at uh, more uh, uh, aged biofilm communities. And you can see that uh, the water channels here form a sort of a curly Q. They're curved uh, like the sewer system. Uh, and that in the cartoon you can see that uh, the solid areas uh, have spaces and the water is going through the solid uh, to uh, through the canal system to enter and exit from the biofilm community. Water channels, both nutrients and waste material. So here we are, water channels, empty spaces, and an Alzheimer plaque, biofilm light. And if you look carefully here, you can see that although the silver has stained the plaque brown, there are areas of yellow coming through, and those yellow areas are equivalent to the black areas here. That's the empty space that allows you to see the underlying yellow normal brain tissue through the center of the brown staining Alzheimer plaque. It's just not enlarged as much as this black area is. So these also water channels going through an Alzheimer plaque using the silver stain. So uh, the, the concept of biofilms is attractive because they come in small, medium, and large. Alzheimer plaques come in small, medium, and large. Uh, biofilms have water channels. Alzheimer plaques have water channel-like spaces. 
and there they are again. And therefore, I think that uh, this explains the architecture of the mysterious Alzheimer plaque. You're allowed to have other chemical constituents inside the plaque. Amyloid is a marker of chronic inflammation. Biofilms happen in chronic inflammation. So the amyloid does not take away in any way from the definition of Alzheimer plaques as Borrelia biofilm communities. It's a chronic infection of the brain. So a quick review of the spirochete uh, uh, various profiles. Here's a profile which most people would recognize as spirochetal, as a wavy uh, corkscrew or some sort of undulating form. That is not the only legitimate form. This is in liquid culture. Remember, if you put it into tissue, uh, these will stretch out and become more uh, wavy and uh, less corkscrew-like in form. This is the uh, second very, very legitimate form, the cystic form, all the permutations. You notice the cysts contain granules, and these granules are the same granules as we uh, saw uh, coming out of the center of the axis of the uh, spiral form. So granules in cystic forms, granules in spiral form. Some of the granules are small, medium, and large. Many granules cystic forms, various sizes of cystic forms, as shown in the tip. And finally, the DNA. This is a DNA distribution uh, with special stain acridine orange. The DNA stains uh, green to uh, yellow. The RNA stains red. And at points of where it will segment, it will break up into the pearls or the granules, and each of these will be single and separate for a period of time. Here they are, the membrane has dissolved away, uh, but they are still close enough to each other that you can connect the dots and see where the spirochete used to be. Just like it is here, you can connect the dots. In order to understand the concepts that I've talked to you about today, you have to be able to connect the dots. Can you connect the dots? This is an uh, old uh, culture with a very aged spirochete connect the dots and you wind up with this which is a spirochete that's not segmented or you wind up with this which is a spirochete that is even earlier in its life history and has not uh, broken up into segments and then into granules. You must be able to connect the dots in order for all of this to make sense and it is a very compelling argument because we're using DNA probes specific for Borrelia as our evidence. We're not depending on antibodies. So DNA probes are the best stain on the planet for detection of microbes. Uh, parting shot, if we take fresh Alzheimer tissue, roll it like a fingerprint across the slide, hit it with a DNA probe, we wind up with an uncoiled Borrelia spirochete with pointed ends, undulating form. These are the cystic forms. The dark black is proteins of brain which do not contain Borrelia DNA. So only Borrelia DNA is going to glow dark green. So it's Borrelia DNA here, 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 and here. All the rest of it is uh, not negative. An Alzheimer case from Harvard Brain Bank, their case number 616. Now we ratified our autopsy studies. Uh, Dr. Uh, McClossey's work ratifies uh, the work that I've done. My work ratifies the work that she's done. We've worked independently. We do not exchange um, uh, notes. Uh, we do not use identical techniques. We do not work in the same country. Uh, we've worked independently over the years and we maintain our independence because that is the way that ratification proceeds in science. If you work independently, you come up with conclusions. If the conclusions are essentially identical, then each of the laboratories has ratified the findings of the other laboratories. We hope that this process will lead us to um, discovery of more Lyme-related infections more disease uh, processes that involve deep, deep organs, more explanations for fatalities in adults, fetuses, 
which are autopsy verified and which can be traced back to Borrelia infection. There is absolute demand for positive tissue controls. And you can make tissue controls by taking your plasma, mixing it with pure culture of Borrelia, making sure that none of the plasma uh, from your blood is mixed with white blood cells or platelets, but it's just pure liquid plasma. Mix the plasma with the Borrelia, clot it with thrombin, and it becomes a ropey tissue-like equivalent. You can cut hundreds of positive control slides, and the only thing in those slides will be fibrin and Borrelia spirochetes in any form. Studying these preparations, you'll develop an atlas of Borrelia morphologies, and you'll be surprised to see how many different morphologies are in this tissue control. Uh, they're not all textbook corkscrews. There are granular forms, there are cystic forms, uh, there are fragmented forms, and uh, these all help you to understand what Borrelia can look like when you're looking at diseased tissue, which might contain Borrelia and you're using DNA probes. I also recommend an apprentice program for pathologists who have never uh, done a spirochetal focus on a human autopsy so that they can learn some of the techniques from more uh, seasoned uh, and experienced uh, specialist pathologists such as myself and Dr. McFlossie who have done these uh, procedures successfully. Antibody negative or biologically positive Borreliosis. This is a vexing category, but uh, it now includes Miyamotoi infections, which can be very close and intimate. Uh, the Bergdorferi family of Borrelia. Miyamoto is a problem because it's a relapsing fever Borrelia. It's probably been among us for many, many years. We just didn't recognize it. There's no blood test for it. It can produce a condition which has spirochetes, but will not react in line blood tests because Miyamotoi does not react in line blood tests. European type infections also may be missed in U.S. manufactured test kits which are designed to pick up USA type Borrelia. Another category of difficulty is viable but non-cultivatable Borrelia strains. These are strains that uh, don't grow in the laboratory very well but can cause disease in the human. Because we can't grow them in the laboratory, we can't manufacture test materials or slides or Western blocks from these viable but non-cultivatable Borrelias. They still cause disease. So you can see them under the microscope, but you may not be able to get a positive blood test result. And some of the newly described strains of formerly non-cultivatable, but now cultivatable, are Americanum, Andersoni, Curtinbaki, Bassetti, Australian strains of Borrelia, Chinese strains, Turkish strains, and South American strains. All newcomers to the Borrelia pathology universe. So our wish list for the 21st century, we hope that uh, people will pick up the baton, continue to study Borrelia, continue to study diseases with pathology tools, molecular tools, 21st century tools. We know that there will be new disease associations uh, described by such uh, 21st century scientists. We know that new co-infections will be described and, and better uh, characterized. And we hope that treatments will be designed to interrupt or to eliminate Borrelia infection from people who suffer from it, no matter whether it's an early infection or a very chronic, chronic late, late infection, such as uh, was the uh, case with Dr. David Martz when he was cured of his uh, Ugaric like disease due to Borrelia infection. He was cured by antibiotics, long term treatment over a number of years. He is now running the clinic to help other people who have an ALS-like illness. So, beginning of lifelong learning, and I bid you adieu uh, with the French Borrelia Sans Frontières, which means Borrelia without limits or geographic boundaries. Thank you very much for your kind attention.